Hi students, Mr. Washam here, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you a couple uh, easy tips for using Google Sheets and generating graphs. So from your drive you want to create a new Google Sheet. So once your sheet loads, as always, please make sure you do not leave it as untitled spreadsheet. Please title it appropriately. And you're ready to begin. So the great thing about Google Sheets is you can put in your data that you collect and you can automatically uh, create a graph for your data. So we're going to put in some fake data here and show you how to make both a bar graph and a line graph. We'll start with making a bar graph. So we would put the data in just like it would be written on paper. So for example, let's say this first column are teacher names. And so we had some teachers that participated. And in the second column, we're going to show the number of wings that the teachers uh, ate in a wing eating contest. So we would put in the number of wings that each teacher ate. And now we're ready to make a graph from the data. Since we have words and numbers, it's going to be a bar graph. And what you want to do is select everything. So this is telling the Google Sheet that I want to make a graph out of all this data. And then what you're going to do is across your toolbar on the top, you should have um, one that looks like this, that's insert chart, or you could get to it by going insert chart. Either way, it does the same thing, so I'm going to insert a chart. And you'll notice by default, it gives it a bar graph, but the bars are running horizontal instead of vertical. You can fix that by choosing this option right here, the column chart. And now it turns everything around the correct way. And you can see that it's got a key over here called wings, so I know the blue bar are titled wings. It's got the words at the bottom and the numbers on the side for me. And it even says chart title at the top, but we know that's not correct. So I'm going to go up here to customize. When you go to customize, it allows you to customize the graph. The first thing you'll notice is you can change the title. So instead of it saying chart title, I want to put in the correctly uh, worded title. So I'm going to call it the effect of teacher on wings 8 or um, eaten or number of wings 8, something like that for a correct, correctly worded title. And then automatically it will change the title at the top for you. So you can see it's already changed for me. Uh, the next thing down right below the title is the legend. The legend is uh, this over here to the side showing the blue bar represents wings. You just have some options as far as if you'd like to position that somewhere else, like at the bottom, or keeping it on the right. You can even choose to have none if you don't necessarily need the legend. In this case, we, we really don't, but we can still show it that the blue bar shows wings. You can change color and font and all that also, uh, stuff that's not necessarily needs to be done. If you continue to scroll down, you get to the axis section. And so with the axis, by default, it loads the horizontal first. Remember, horizontal being your x-axis. And notice it just has uh, teacher names, and so we can give this a title. And these are names of, these are our teachers. And if there were any units, which there are not, you would put that in parentheses here. Again, you can change color and font and all of that if needed. Also, if you needed to slant the labels, you could uh, slant them by moving them at a degree angle and instead of them being uh, horizontal across here you could you could slant them a little and make them fit if they're too long to fit normally. To get to the Y axis you would choose the drop down menu next to axis and choose left vertical and now it will switch over to here and we're going to go ahead and give it a title. Remember these are the uh, uh, number of wings and let's just say there was a unit maybe it was in pounds it wasn't, but if it was, we could put go ahead and put the units in there. And notice, there it is. Your label is now in there with units if needed. And those are my major uh, options that go 
with the uh, customized menu. And of course, you can fix all that at any time. And so my graph looks pretty good. I'm ready to insert it, and I choose Insert. And my graph is now inserted. Uh, notice that it's sitting on top of the data. So what I want to do right here is I want to choose this drop-down button, and I want to choose um, Move to Own Sheet. Move to Own Sheet. And this will open up the chart on its own page, nice and big. So here's the data. Here's the chart. And just so you know, if you change any of this, it's going to change uh, your chart automatically. So let's, uh, Langford was at 16. Let's make her the one that she actually ate the most wings. If we switch that around to 65, and I now look at the chart, uh, Langford now has the most. So as you change the data, it will automatically change your chart. All right, in this part, I'm going to show you how to make the line graph. So that was bar graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert a new sheet. And on this one, I'm going to do our line graph data. So line graph is pretty much the same thing. You're going to set up your graph just like it would be on paper. So um, let's go with, um, on this one, we're going to stick with our wings theme. And with our wings theme, we're going to talk about, let's pretend you go to the store and you buy um, several different uh, bags of wings, and the wings always come in so many pounds. And let's try to figure out what um, bag, pound-wise, has the most wings in it. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to buy, um, let's see, pounds of wings. Actually, let's just call it wings, and our units would be pounds. So the wings come in pound bags, and let's say we get a one-pound bag, a two-pound bag, a three-pound bag, and a four-pound bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to buy several different bags of each one and find out the average. So we've got sample bag one, sample bag two, and sample bag three. And then, of course, in the very last column, we would put the average. Now, the only problem um, with Google Sheets is when you put the average all the way over here, we know we're always going to graph just the first and last column. And the problem with that in Google Sheets is you have this stuff that sits in between and it kind of interrupts um, the program and it doesn't want to graph for you correctly. So what you end up having to do is instead of putting average at the end, you actually have to put average in the second column over. It's no big deal because you're just calculating the average, so all you're going to do is move it. So I'm going to take the average column, and I need average actually to be second, because that way when I graph it, I know I just want to graph those two sets of data, and it will work appropriately. Again, if it was left at the end and you just tried to graph the first and last, it, it won't work. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my sample data. All right, so let's just pretend for a one pound bag, this is how many wings come in each bag. Let's say 10, 12, and 12. All right, and then in bag two, where we have two pounds of wings, let's just put in some numbers. Let's say this is the amount of wings that come in each sample bag. For three pounds, and for four pounds of wings, Now, to get the average, uh, you, you know that you add up all three and divide by three because that's how you get average. But the great thing about sheets is it already will, it will do that for you automatically. So by putting my mouse in the average column, I know I want to find the average of these three rows. You will have a, um, a button across the top that's your function button. It looks like an E. And the two most used functions are listed first, sum and average. In this case, we don't want to find the sum. We want to find the average, so I just click average. And it's saying, what uh, cells do you want to find the average of? So I just select them. I want this one, this one, and this one. And if I hit Enter, it will give me the average right away of those three cells. I can continue to do the same thing for the other ones. Or if you will just uh, click on the cell that you put the average function in, and the little blue box in the corner, if you will drag it down, it will copy that function to the rest of them, and there it is. Now notice we've got a bunch of decimals here, so to make our numbers look nice and neat, you can select your numbers and go to Format, Number, and Number. And this will format your numbers nice and neat, giving them two decimal points at the end. It does the rounding for you automatically. 
So now I'm ready to graph. Remember, I would just graph the wings and the last column, which is average, but I went ahead and moved the average column, so they're side by side. So I'm going to graph these two only. And again, I'll choose Insert My Chart. And because it's numbers and numbers, it needs to be a line graph. By default, it loads the bar graph, but here's your line graph. And if we choose it, um, it's looking kind of funky. It's giving me two lines. And you're like, well, that's not right. And that's because you need to select Use Column A as Labels. Use Column A as Labels. So when I select that, it will give me just one line. And it's now got my pounds of wings across the bottom. It's got the number of wings on the side, but we need to customize that. So we go to Customize. And the chart title is the effect of pounds on number of wings and I'm gonna go down and I'm going to um, oh that you do not really need so my legend I don't really need to know that's the average I'm just gonna say none there we go and I'm gonna go down for my horizontal axis uh, these were the um, wings in pounds and I'm going to change it over to my left vertical and these were the number of wings so what you can tell from the graph is that the as the pounds of wings increase so do the number of wings that you can find in each bag the graph will not make you a line of best fit like we use in class uh, it will it will um, make a line graph as far as connecting the dots like a normal line graph so I am ready to insert that and again I want to move it to its own sheet and so I now have my bar graph data with the bar graph I have my line graph data with the line graph and the last thing you can do is whenever you're looking at your graphs you can save the image so I can choose to save image and this will download the image for you and then if you go to somewhere else where you're going to insert that image, whether it's on your blog or in this case a uh, document where I want that image to show up somewhere else, I'm going to go to insert image and I'm going to upload it and I choose an image to upload and there is my line graph I'll open and it will put my line graph in for me and I believe there were some questions that you were supposed to answer and so you would put your answers here so that is how you work with Google Sheets if you have any other questions as always please be sure and ask